Good morning, gamers! Welcome to the Smokehouse! I'm your host, as always, the final gamer! And today, we're gonna be playing some Fear and Hunger 2, let me tell you. Uh, my precious cat boy ears. I don't recall wearing cat boy ears ever. Uh, there ain't there ain't a Patreon tier high enough to make the final gamer wear some cat boy ears. I, I can assure you. Um, okay, so we 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 got we got two big things to cover here. Uh, number one, we have a new gamer notification for our subscriptions. Um, I think Mondo Cool served us really well for a really long time but i think it's i think we time uh oh i think it's time we change things up and the new notification should appear quite soon screen labs you son of a bitch there we go um, so, you know, you know that, um, so, you know I have rules around notifications, when to use them and when not to use them. Uh, this notification is specifically for if something, um, spooky happens or mysterious and then the notification goes off. Uh, it is not to be used if I fuck up. It's not to be used if I get something wrong. It can be used if I solve a mystery. That's fine. Um, that, that's no problem at all. Um, it can be used if I find a clue, like perhaps a key with fingerprints on it. Um, it's, that's totally fine. We can use it then. Um, uh, yeah, so it, it's a very mysterious notification and I, um, uh, I encourage you all to use it responsibly. There we go. <laughs> It's just, it's really weird to see myself staring at me so intensely. Will you top, do a top 100 for a Christmas special like top 100 wrestlers, manga, anime, movie, or albums? Um, I have some Christmas special plans cooking. We got stuff cooking. I think you guys are going to get excited. I think you guys will be hype. Um, although what I'm talking about isn't necessarily a stream, but... Look, we will definitely do some shit around Christmas, okay? I, my plan is to have enough content lined up that you guys should be able to enjoy plenty final gamer over Christmas. That is most likely when we'll put the charity stream up on YouTube. Um, I'll have a bunch of shit going. So yeah, yeah, we're gonna have, we're gonna have a lot of special Christmas content. But yeah, look, we're gonna do a special Christmas stream or a holiday stream, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's cool with me. Okay, so, second announcement. My friends, it's a very special day. It's a day I like to call Gamer Eve. And that is because... Tomorrow... Is the most special day on the gaming calendar. It's not E3. It's not a Nintendo Direct. It's not a PlayStation Vita update blog. It is... I know I'm laughing at my own joke, but that was really funny. <laughs> that was weird because like I was looking at myself in the screen when it happened. <laughs> oh, tomorrow is the birth of the final gamer. November 4th, a national holiday on every gamer's calendar. Tomorrow is the day that 37 years ago, I crawled into this world. <laughs> 
crawled into this world controller and hand and said it's time to game so yeah i enter my 37th year tomorrow um i have managed to i have managed to survive 36 in a row up till now and i am planning um i am planning to keep that streak going it's refreshing to watch someone who isn't younger than me okay look this is how i always say it like i'm pretty old I didn't make my first YouTube video till I was 29. And not to not to not to shit talk myself in my 20s, but I I tried a lot of things and I would say it was a waterfall of failure. Uh well, look, not failure, but like I never really succeeded in anything. You know, it was like never there was never shit where like shit just blew up for me. Like everything always kind of worked or didn't work and then when i was 29 i started youtube and obviously youtube has been successful for me whether i have been successful for youtube whole other conversation and that's honestly kind of why i laugh not laugh but like sometimes i get like you know in the discord and stuff i occasionally get like someone who's say 22 23 24 25 being like i just feel like my life isn't going anywhere and like my response is always the same it's like Dude, you could fuck up for the next 10 years and be totally fine, you know? And ultimately, with success, failure, all that shit, the thing I always say, right? The things that make me really, truly, insanely happy are the same things before I was a YouTuber. Hanging out with my friends, experiencing cool art, just you know occasionally helping someone out if i can i really love helping people not because i'm a good person but because it fulfills an internal validation in me to believe i'm a good person chat do you understand the difference there it's not a moral thing it's a self-sustaining thing um I'm afraid of sharing my work. It's amazing you're brave enough to do it. I have admired that about you since I followed day one. NPC Fury, I appreciate that. But look, the worst thing that can happen when you share your work is people say you're shit. Um, I had to try so hard for so many years before anyone even noticed me enough to tell me I'm shit. You know what I mean? And, like, the number of people who tell me I'm shit are in the tens of thousands at this point. And it sucks. And it makes me sad. But nothing matters to me more than the creation. You know what? I, I, look, I, I know a lot of people like my work as well. Don't... I, I'm, I, don't, don't compliment me. I don't, I don't need it. I get it. Um, but, yeah, look. People calling your work shit, it gives you, like, a bad day. But making good work and enjoying it, it's a fucking good life there, my friends. Don't don't let anxiety take that away from you. Get complimented on, idiot. <laughs> uh, I wasted so long being miserable because I assumed that was the only way to be. Yo, man, I can relate to that, dude. I remember um, I put up I, I put up with like severe anxiety for I'd say maybe. I just I'm trying to line it up I put up with like severe anxiety for maybe a year year and a half like real crippling like panic attacks all the time kind of shit you know and it was only like when I started like going to therapy getting help and being like I don't want my life to be this that it started getting better <laughs> How was that? Was that good? Did that line up okay? <laughs> oh, yeah. But, um, here's the thing about anxiety, right? It's like, I would say nowadays my anxiety is 99% better. I still have anxious days, and especially if something bad happens. Like, if I have a bad day, something... You know, if something goes wrong or fucking someone's like 
mad at me or whatever. I can totally have an anxious day. I have not had a panic attack in years. I, I couldn't even tell you when the last one is. So it's like, you know, you're, you can actually get rid of it. So that brings us to the important topic of birthday gifts chat. And there's one thing I want from all of you. I want you to have a good time on this stream. And the second gift is something I am going to give to myself, chat. The gift of victory. Because we are on the home stretch of Fear and Hunger 2. Today, we bring this game to its knees. A uh, little shout out to Dark Raccoon once again as well as the New Gods podcast for their exceptional work in promoting fear and hunger. Okay. It's not as many empty scrolls gathering dust. Why hoard empty scrolls? That, that is a question you ponder. Oh, that's a good little joke. Empty scrolls are one of the best items in fear and hunger one. Oops. Oh shit, we have one of these. Okay, we have two soul. Actually, let's quit out just for the moment. Two soul stone. Um, hello, I haven't seen the last three streams. Can I have the worst and most succinct uh, recap possible? Sure thing, buddy. Uh, made some friends, made some enemies, uh, had some bad times, had some good ones too. Now we're here. Now we're fighting. Now we're thriving. Because uh, together we made it, even though we had our backs against the wall. Uh, to quote the great Buster Rhymes. Hey, John. You've seen the new video from the dev showing how cooking is going to be a lot harder in the future updates. Interesting. I have not. Uh, I'm not seeing too many options for us right now. Yeah, I think we'll leave it for the moment. What is this? Detailed stone carvings fill the wall. The carvings look faintly recent despite mimicking an older style. What era should Fear and Hunger 3 be in? Uh, I think just modern day. Modern day. Hmm. I'm not sure. Let me let me think on that. I'm not a big history guy, so there's probably people like like I don't really. Oh shit! I forgot about that. I'm really starting to feel hungry. Like I was bummed when I learned that Fear and Hunger Two wasn't a fantasy game. Um, and now that I actually play it. Uh, now that I actually play it, I'm like, no, I was an idiot. It's great. Um, so I don't know. I like, hmm. yeah, I guess I'd be kind of curious to see it modern day. But I feel like when you say, okay, the early '90s, I think the early '90s would be the way to go. I think the problem with like saying put anything in the modern day is immediately like, oh, so will social media be a gameplay mechanic? And it's like, for the love of God, no, please God, no. Wait. We're in the shopping district? Oh, right. We're at the part of the shopping district we can't get to normally. Beer. 70s, like, post-Cold War is also, like, a super fun time. So maybe something like that. Um, I mentioned it on yesterday's stream, but I don't think I actually finished my thought. I have been watching that... Um, anime fuck i can't remember the name it's called farnies or something like that it's beyond the something it's about an elf mage and she used to be in a party and it's rad it's really really cool it's like basically this dungeons and dragons party kills the demon lord and it's their lives after they kill the demon lord but like aging really like the elf doesn't age but the rest of them do okay i know where we are now Um, 
Freenan. Yeah, Freenan. Um, there is something about that anime where anime that, like, soft and slow-paced... Uh, the Great Debate of Preveal. Uh, Preveal. Uh, held in June 19 at the Grand Palace of Preveal, Bohemia, by Sides of the War. Um, where, like, usually I'm not a fan of anime, like, that slow-paced, but there is something about that show that I actually quite enjoy it. Like, it's a really chill pre-bedtime watch. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm really curious to see where it'll go. And it's one of those shows, like, there's no crazy, like, animation. Like, there's no fucking insane action scenes or anything. But it looks constantly pleasant. Like, there's no bad animation in it. There's no, like, bits where, like, it looks weird or fucked up. And I'm having a very good time with it so far. Would recommend... Shillings. Oh. Oh my. It's a statue of a man wrapped under a giant snake. The expression of the man's face is that of anguish. Preview temple site. Okay, this whoa. Something about the terror from front of you feels wrong. Your primal instincts tell you to run away. And run away we shall. And um, because that is our destination, and I just wanna was that just just the music? Let's just have a little explore around. Why? Oh, those fucking things! Yeah, I don't want to fight them again. Um, they're not that dangerous, but they can just take a crazy amount of punishment. Museum. What the fuck is going on? The person does not react to your presence in any way. Excuse me. No answer. The person doesn't react to your presence in any way. What is wrong with you? No answer. The person doesn't react to your presence in any way. The person behind the house seems to be in the middle of conversation. These people are nodding and moving their dry lips in sync with each other, yet there are no words to be heard. Oh! Oh! It's almost as if they are left on autopilot. Maybe there once was an actual masquerade here and the people were left idle for whatever reason. You can see scorched skin under the mask. The eyes are glassy and dry. The whole frame looks weakened. Almost as if these people have been standing here for an eternity. First, just react to your presence. I know you're not one of these people. Greetings. Welcome to the Grand Masquerade. We are celebrating the end times, the Festival of Termina. I'm sure you're aware of the festival by now. Ah, but alas, we are not forever young, are we, my master? I understand that your, that your time is money, and money is nigh. And if I'm not mistaken, you're waiting for the bells to ring, am I right? Before that happens... I would have liked to introduce you to some of my close acquaintances, hmm, but I cannot seem to remember where they could have gone. They must be all, they must still be at the ball somewhere. Well, in case you run into them, tell them I sent you. The ones I talk about are the Red Devil, the Sun Priestess, and the Happy Mask Salesman. Okay, Red Devil, Silent Hill. Sun Priestess, I think, is Dark Souls, and the Happy Mask Salesman is Majora's Mask. I'm sure you will recognize them. And uh, what's going on with this fellow? That looks like Almer. The exhibition on show here is the Bo in Bohemian National Museum. Bohemian National Museum dives into the deep and various religious beliefs around the world. Almer, the Ascended One, is a great example on how different these perspectives can really be when examining them through a lens of different cultures. In Europa, Almer is often depicted as a male with a Caucasian facial features, a bald head, and a muscular body. In Eastern sanctuaries, Almer is often described according to his earlier depictions where he was still just a mortal. In these images, he is often thinner than his Western counterpart and sports longer hair, closer to how he was described before ascending and losing all his body hair. Naturally, his facial features often depict him as a native to Eastern sanctuaries too. The Western depictions highlight his godly stature, whereas the Eastern sanctuaries, he is more humanized. Interesting. 
Um, hey Sue, if you go in one of the directions, something may happen that may or may not be helpful. Thank you, Stone Gladius. Um, Stone Gladius, your name is starting to stand stand out to me, which means that I think you 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 might uh, you might be sassing me a lot on these streams. So I got my eye on you, buddy. A masquerade in any other situ situation, I'd be excited about this, but I don't know. This feels just uncanny in all the wrong ways. Dan, do you notice it already? This place, it doesn't follow the normal- I THOUGHT SO! The interior feels way bigger than what the building looked like from the outside. I thought that because this hall makes no sense. Oh my god, they're freaky. The Hour of Truth sounds mysterious. The masked person seems to be in a trance of some kind. Excuse me. The dev fucking loves references. Yeah, I can see that. References are a weird one to me because, like, I don't particularly enjoy them. But, like, the reason I don't enjoy them is just, like, I just don't get anything out of them when they happen. But I know enough people who, like, just love references, you know? And I just feel like it's a thing where everyone has or does not have in their brain something that makes them be like, Oh, yeah, it's that thing! Or something that just doesn't make them like that, you know? And what is happening? That kind of looks like the cave, mother. The person doesn't react to your presence in any way. And that is absolutely, um, yeah, he's outside the library in Fear and Hunger 1. The famed new god who formed the grand libraries of Fear and Hunger 1, and where every one of his successors would gather their knowledge and fill the library shelves with books from their expertise, generally viewed as the father of enlightenment among the new gods and the one who wrote about the human dilemma. It is widely believed that the, that the mythical figure is based on Bethel Kishar, one of the more popular scholars of ancient Mesopotamia. His contemporary Magus Charl, the Holy Vatican Emperor, described Nashra. Is that Nashra? With the following famous sentences A delirious old man passed by the times. He who has the whole civilized world under his narcissistic abuse, thinking all nations should be behind his childlike tantrums. I mean, that describes Nashra pretty well, in fairness. Galian sword. How bad is it gonna hurt if we break the glass? Like, what's gonna- Ah, fuck it. Who has our blade weapon again? Oh, we have this. Is it better than that? Wait, can she not use that sword? That's a good sword. Oh, we better... Some vodka. There you go. And let's crack let's crack open some beers. Uh, and let's see if we can craft any healing stuff. Um, yeah. Got the blue. Okay, I, I don't want to use any healing items on her left yet because she does have some stuff that'll help her. This is all, these are all relics from here at Fear and Hunger 1. This is fucking dope. This is so cool. Hey, 
Hang on a minute. Okay, there's a staircase. Oh, they're spooky. But if we keep going down, does it ever end? Nope, it does not. I thought so. God, that is some exceptional music here. Use the directional keys. Oh, it said something about the witching hours being between 1 and 2. Um... Huh. So that's between... Oh, shit. So that would be between 1 and 2, which means that this would have to be 1, which means that this now... Hmm. So that the minute hand is then between that. Yeah, that should make sense, right? That's the minute hand. This one's the minute hand. Oh, so that one's the... You're going to have to force it. You need to find three people for the correct answer. Okay. Oh, I get it. So they want me to find the mask salesman. They want me to find the red devil. And they want me to find the moon priestess. Okay. It's pretty easy to brute force with two correct answers. Okay. Oh. They are spooky. I don't know why this row of people in particular... Not cool. Do, do not like. And now we're going to go here until we start looping again. My god, all the different, like, sprites. It's a lot of work. Oh, <sighs> okay. Special soul, find a red herb. That's just... Ah! Uh, hey, buddy! Ah! Oh. Well, hello there, stranger. Have we met yet? There is something familiar about you, so surely we have. You have one of those faces. A face one does simply not forget. You glow and lift up everyone around you. I hope you're enjoying the ball. Just what's going on here? It's quite peculiar. The atmosphere is festive and I dare say infectious. If you want to break from the area of the sea of party people, luckily there are plenty of distractions to examine. I can't but help to wonder this I can't help but to wonder this lovely building and admire the works of art they've gathered here. They truly are remarkable pieces here. Art falls into two categories. No, not the art. My bad. Artists fall into two categories. I can't believe Pocket Dog is here. There are the ones who see something t taking place in the world. Maybe it's wrongdoings of their fellow pedestrians. Maybe it's abuse of power by those sitting on the pyramid scheme. Whatever it is, it feeds their inspiration and creativity, and they desperately want to put their own spin on it. It must be very spontaneous, I imagine, painting a picture in an inspired frenzy, or composing a piece of music that beats in sync with the world. I call those people extroverted artists. Then they're the other half of poor sods, the ones who dwell on their own thoughts and insight. They want to paint a picture of their own inner world, maybe in hopes that someone else would understand them just a little bit better, or maybe to connect with a few like-minded individuals. Maybe these artists would want to depict their pictures of times as well, but only if the event taking place would strike a chord with the monologue they are having with the world. I call those people introverted artists. I think I'm an introverted artist, chat. Both sound selfish in their own right. 
the extroverted artists who benefit from the suffering of others, while the inner introverted artists, on the other hand, sound very self-centered, only wanting to talk about themselves. That is, that is definitely me. Now that I think about it, there might be a third kind as well. My favorite kind, actually. Authors who don't even have a clear picture of their mind when they start their creative process. They let the story write itself, like the brush strokes dictate the direction of the story instead of trying to force their own will on it. Such chaotic process can lead to unexplored directions. Inspiration can be a chaotic process, don't you think? Say old sport, the one who dreams all this, the dreamer buried deep underground, which type do you think she is? The third type. Ah, I let my bias shine through and you follow up, followed on to it still. I think you might be right there, my friend. I guess I'm just rambling here, letting my mind wander and mouth slander, as they say. You know me, when I get excited, I can go on and on and on. I don't mean to take your time. From what I understand, you've got your hands full with the festival already. So I'll get straight to the point. Not only a wandering gentleman, but I am also a head salesman. Yeah, I, we, we, we've been through all this. Um, I have four contestant heads. I think a Book of Enlightenment is probably a good call, chat. What do you think? Yes, I think we have consensus on that. And I'm going to keep my final head. Okay, let's drop down a level and keep exploring. It's an old armor from the medieval times. The armor is huge and heavy. There's no way you could use it effectively. It's just for decoration then. Or they're really people this size back in the day. I think people... Got, I think we as a species got taller, right? People used to be way smaller in olden times. Oh, the season? It definitely is the month of the sulfur. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. The masked person seems to be in a trance of some kind. I guess this is the masked salesman? No. Hmm. Triangle. The masked person seems to be in a trance of some kind. I believe. Cool. Ring of rates. Nice. Actually, I think that means... Let's check this. Let's trade this for a ring of rates. So now every one of our party has, like, regenerative health, which is really handy. Oh, man. This is all fear and hunger one shit. It's cool to see. Uh, please feed Dan. Um, yeah, okay. Eat your food, Dan. I feel like they're getting hungry so quickly. I wonder if it's because we're, like, walking so much. I think we may have just looped, but what are you going to do? Actually, can we... No, we cannot. Hey John, what's your favorite potato chip flavor? I'm pretty partial to the old paprika or um or a, or a good sweet chili personally. Hmm. Have you tried going up the stairs? I have and that is where I that is where the clock is. That has to be the Red Devil, surely. 35 minutes, 25 until the next hour. Okay, writing that down. So we got one. If we get two, we can brute force it. Do I have them all? What were... Wait, what were the other two? You spoke to all three? Did I? Uh, did I? Okay. Month of sulfur between one and two. Okay, I'm an idiot. Month of sulfur between one and two. Gotcha. I never saw the fish person before. Okay. So... This is the minute hand, and this is going to be 35. So that's 35. 
Then the hour hands between one and two, I do believe. And then this one. Do I have, do I, uh, that is not 35. So wait, so that's 30. And is that not 35? I'm confused. The hints to the puzzle are slightly wrong, by the way. That's not the most sulfur, it's a triangle. The, yeah, I, I, I am. Oh, I see what's happening here. Okay. There we go. That is a fear and hunger one pit, if ever I did see one. Cloth rag. Let's just descend down this big terrifying hole. Nothing but engulfing darkness awaits you down below. Fantastic. Will you ever go back to Moonless? Oh, we're going back to Moonless at some point. I promise you that. I'm guessing that place, that the museum is bad for people's mind because it's so, um, so dark. Because everyone is freaking the fuck out. Eat your goulash, Marina. Nice. And let's ever let, let's let's give everyone a little beer. Uh, Marina has a ring that restores her mind, so we're just gonna keep her chilling for the moment. North or south? We'll, we'll try north first, I guess. Hmm. He switched on the monitor. Open the vault door. Fails. Check the connection. West tell off. So I'm guessing there's shit we have to activate. Remember that computer in the basement with the elephant man? Oh! So if that's the case... I, I don't think... We, did we ever even do that? I can't remember if we did that with, with uh, Olivia. Oh... So now does that mean it's too late to do them or we'd have to go back out into the map and do them? Yeah, cuz we've been we've been there a couple of times and done this stuff, but or like in other playthroughs like on the charity stream and stuff. Is that all that's down here? You can still do them. Hmm. But do we want to? Do we want to on this playthrough? John, will you ever get a streaming overlay layout? Yeah, I will for sure. Um, that's actually something me and Fox have been talking about. Okay, this was a giant waste of time. Uh, let's get out of this godforsaken museum and never come back. Do you want to get behind the giant mystery door? Are you joking? I more mean, like, do we want to do that in this playthrough? Because, like, chat, let's be real here. This is not going to be our only Fear and Hunger 2 playthrough. Okay, I want to get out of here. This really the route you want to go with, Olivia. Uh, you have to do it if you want to get a good end. Hmm. I really want to see what's at the tower. Okay, let's go see what's at the tower. And after that, we'll think about it. God, this map is so huge. And we've been, we've been here. 
You should save before the tower. Ooh, don't want to fight him. Um, yeah, I will. I will. This way. Oh, maybe we can. Yes. And this is the tower. Uh, I'm gonna say, not getting a super feeling from this tower. Let's do some party chat. Marina. Father, what have you done? Marina looks devastated. Dan. All this, it looks relatively fresh. Is this part of the festival? Do we, um... Do we want to save right now, or should we wait a little bit? Wait, okay. I, th I, think, I think the general consensus is wait. You feel an intense aura emanating from the... <gasps> figure in yellow. You are petrified in fear and awe as this person lays its eyes on you. I should have fucking healed. The presence feels old, almost ancient. You get a feeling that this person is not just a normal human. Oh my fucking god, is that Lagarde? Yes, it is. The king in yellow, Pav Kaiser. Do you even know why this bullet has your name written on it? You're one of my officials, Pavel Yudin. You were recruited from Vornia during the First Great War. This must mean that I'm responsible for demolishing the village you were born in and your family and relatives. Kaiser, I sincerely hope this is not an act of vengeance. That would mean you've wasted all your life in spite waiting for this opportunity. Pav, it's not wasted if I get my revenge here. Hell, I'd do this even if it was just meant that no one else has to go through the same. So Pav wasn't such a bad dude. And don't even try to give me any of that. It's good for the greater good bullshit. You're stepping on people without regret just to pursue your own endeavors. Kaiser, I do not do anything for the greater good. The greater good, the greater scheme of things is a trap humanity has fallen into far too many times. What I've done is a necessary step for the mankind. I'm guessing that's a typo. I said I don't want that bullshit! And he just shot him. He just shot Kaiser. Oh, shit. The Brahmin would tell him to still alive, just barely. There's a huge cut going from his chest to his ab ab abdomen. Are you okay? He doesn't seem to be conscious. He's bleeding severely. Boom! That's what you get for killing Jojo. You absorb the chaotic soul. Medical diagnosis. Seems dead to me. Don't know what else to say. Thanks, Dan. Look, that guy had it coming. Pav's been kind of a wanker this whole time. You feel dizzy being this close to the monolith. Your sight becomes blurry and you can hear the blood rush in your veins. And a light blue vial, nice. We picked up a fair few healing items. Why couldn't you be that decisive with the princess last night? Okay, listen. People are trying to spin my playthrough with the princess. Um, I I was testing the waters. I, I like I just needed some data. That's all that happened there. I wasn't being a fucking simp like everyone in the fucking chat was saying. I was being a cool dude. And I always try and tell you guys that. That anything I do is something a cool guy would do. And it just, it blows my mind you still haven't gotten that. Now we're back there. Loot Pat's carcass. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, I forgot. Man, this has gone poorly for all these people. Is 
Pav's carcass gone? It appears to be. Huh. I'm guessing if we left him alive. Um, like, don't touch it. I get something otherworldly about this thing. It's weird. I've been to this terror many times before, but it never resonated with me quite this strongly. I don't like it. We should stay away from it and definitely not touch anything, okay? Your heart beats out loudly as a drum just by being so close to the tower. Adrenaline is rushing through you. You cannot explain this feeling. You are at the same time both terrified and tempted to touch the intricate. Chat, what are we thinking? What are we? I kind of want to touch it. I kind of want to touch it. Oh dear. Uh, I didn't say anything. Uh-oh, I think- You know what, we actually haven't, like, if we die, we haven't even been reset that far. It's just the puzzle in the museum, and we already have the shit for that, so it's okay. To this day, to get answers, fine. I accept your proposal. Dan, buddy, what the fuck are you talking about? Wait. He's wearing Dan's trousers? He's wearing Dan's trousers! What? Uh... We have to fight Garfield? I mean, Pocket Cat? Okay, I'm gonna disarm him first and foremost. Uh, that pocket arm is coming the fuck off. Pocket Cat's eyes light up. Oh! Pocket Cat is sizing you up, you feel dirty. Yes, I do. We've got quite a pickle here. You see, my master has made it very, very, very clear that I shall not let my dirty little paws affect the course of the events during this festival. But what is a gentleman duel without an adrenaline rush of excitement? I cannot just stand here idle now, can I, old sport? So, I come up with the most perfect solution. If you tell me what to do, I'm just following your wishes, right? Right, so tell me, which limb would you like to have me remove? Do not worry, my touch is gentle yet firm. Um... I-I-I-I-I... I guess my leg? Leg it is, your wish is my command. Olivia lost her left leg, it's bleeding heavily. Uh... It's okay. Get the fucking arm off. Pocket Cat's eyes light up. You. Oh, you're my chosen one. Let's have a little one-on-one, -on -one, shall we? Pocket Cat is whispering secrets to Olivia. Olivia is looking shocked and paralyzed every minute of the deep with every detail. A nice rubbing. Uh, that's why I want that arm gone. <laughs> so tell me, which limb would you like to have me remove? Uh, rip my leg. Leg it is, your wish is my command. <laughs> Shit, I'm sorry, Maria. <coughs> God damn it, that arm. Nope, don't like that. <laughs> so tell me, which limb would you like to have me remove? Don't worry. Uh, leg again, I guess. I can't be I can't just be choosing your legs all the time. There are no loopholes in this little game of ours. Now be a good sport and choose something else. No one likes a bad loser or cheater, so tell me which limb. Uh... If I say I don't want anything... Hmm... 
Bilto ain't burning him, ain't healing. Well, right now, both characters have, like, health restoration items, so I think, I worry that, and he doesn't seem to be doing a lot of damage, so I worry that we're just going to be wasting healing items. I can burn him. I just didn't know to burn him because it's my first time playing the game, chat. At least this section of the game. Um, I'm going to go for I don't want you to do anything, but I feel like it's going to go badly. Oh, what poppycock. Sure you do. Don't be shy. So tell me. Uh, I don't want anything. Motherfucker. Uh, I guess arm... Arms it is. Your wish is my command. Yes! What the fuck? Nice. Okay. That's his arm down. Um, I think I'm just going to start going for his body. Oh, shit. Okay, I'll burn him next turn. Is that the way you treat a fellow gentleman? Oh, behave. You. Oh, you're my chosen one. Let's have a little one-to-one, -one, shall we? Pocket cast is whispering secrets to Olivia. Olivia is shocked and paralyzed every minute. Over every mi minute detail. <laughs> so tell me. Oh, fuck. Uh, all right, it's got to be arm again. Arms it is. Your wish is my command. Marina lost her left arm. It's bleeding heavily. Okay, we need to kill this fucking dude. This is rough. Try legs again. Legs it is, your wish is my command. And Marina's down, that's no good. Leg. I feel like that's a lot of legs, but okay. Oh, fucking God damn it. <laughs> Oh, it's got to be arm now, right? Please miss, please miss, please miss. Fuck, fuck. Marina lost her other arm too. Oh, shit. Well, that's bad. Whoever's telling me to heal, right you were. God damn it! Olivia's party was victorious. You absorbed the blank soul. Here lies Marina. Pocket cat is down. You get a light blue vial, a scalpel, and a silk vest. Oh, I've been waiting for a while to do this. No reaction. He is dead. Saw off his head. The bone saw cracked. all the time to lose the bone saw. I think maybe we have a spare. Uh, 
Uh, Assault Flamingo. Be careful, John. Pocket Cat removes limbs. Excellent. Thank you for that, Assault Flamingo. Just exceptional timing on that advice, and I really appreciate it. Um, for your information, when you bring party members to the tower, they get moon scorched because you are supposed to be the only one entering the tower. Whoa, that's cool. Okay, so where are we going now? Oh, let's just restore some sanity. We can restore some sanity, right? We got the lavender shit. Condensed lavender. Boom. Um, If you want to go up to Terror, you're going to need to find and kill all the other contestants. Right. You need to win the battle royale in order to enter the tower. So it's either activating all the generators or finding uh, the other contestants. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I see where people are coming from now. So I think our best bet is to just reload and then we will... Um, we're just gonna... We're gonna go for the generators. 